Hello. Rochaba. It's welcome in Hebrew and shalom is just peace in the world. And I love Monday nights. And I I don't know if get, every guest gets better. It just keeps getting better. And I am one blessed soul to be able to be doing this. Uh, Rose will be joining us in a minute or two. Um, she's in Australia traveling and is finding some Wi-Fi. And we are here tonight with Dana. I love saying your last name, Crossier. Yeah, Dana Crossier. 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 And Chris Anna is a beautiful name, Sexton. And you guys are in Arizona. Where in Arizona? Yeah, so we live in a city called Gilbert, Arizona. So maybe like 30 minutes from Phoenix. Okay, amazing, amazing. What beautiful country, what beautiful, what beautiful country, beautiful weather, everything. So my name is Dr. Tova Goldfine for our listeners who are coming to visit us on the Facebook page. This is TMS Roundtable. And if you know anything about us, you're going to find out a lot about us um, tonight. I, Rose and I, occasionally we do a show about ourselves. But anyway, this is really about you guys. And, um, and Rose and I met through Michael Galinsky and TMS Roundtable is um, honoring some of John Sarno's work, Dr. John Sarno, and other amazing doctors who have followed in his footsteps, like Dr. David Hanskin, who's all of our friends, and Dr. Schrubiner, and Dr. David Schechter, and Dr. David Clark, and the PBDA Association, which I think I told you ladies about. is this amazing association called Psychophysiological Disorders Association. And it's this huge association studying stress illness or you know, autoimmune disease and chronic pain and how we heal it through the body-mind methods and the science. And there's a hundred bibliographies in the resources and there's a numerous research. So if anybody needs the research, it's there. But we're here tonight to talk about the art and the science of Love Heals. And in Dr. John Sarno's honor, he said, I don't need the research because I'm seeing the results. So that was, that was Dr. John Sarno. Anyway, so happy that you're here, Dana and Chrisana. And um, I'm going to start asking a few questions about this movie that is going to be premiered starting tomorrow. It's going to go from the 18th to the, go ahead, why don't you talk? I'm going to rest my jaws right now. Tell us about the movie. When it's going to be premiered, tell us a little bit about um, that. And then I, I have a question to sort of um, draw some information that I'm really excited to bring out to the listeners from you and, and from the both of you. So tell us a little bit about the movie premiere. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having us. Sure. It's one o'clock here. So I love that we're doing this like international thing. It just Lunch. makes me feel like Lunch. really connected. Yeah, I love that. We're um, with our feelings. <laughs> right. So yeah, we are the, well, I'm the director of Love Heals. Dana's a producer and uh, Love Heals is a documentary and there's a whole backstory to it, but essentially we have spent the last year creating a documentary that we hope will help a lot of people feel inspired and feel like you know, if they're on their journey of healing and maybe have exhausted all options that or as many options as they know about, that maybe there's another way. Maybe there are other options out there that have been known for thousands of years. So or, that was kind of the journey we went on. Or, or what happens is that we, you know, we, we have these medically unexplained symptoms or our doctor says, I don't know. You know, like what you're saying is like that we have, a, you know, we live with a, a, a model that there's other options, there's alternatives to so continue because I just love how you phrase that continue. Go on. Yeah. So we just created this film with that hope that uh, people would feel that. And of course, it follows Dana's journey and we can explain more about that. But to answer your question, yeah. what's happening tomorrow is after like what, nine months? Yeah. Nine months of filming and editing. We pushed really, really hard to have the release of the film happen quickly. And so, because we just feel like the world is ready, the world needs this message now more than Amazing. ever. Amazing. Yeah. So tomorrow we're launching the film and it's a 
worldwide virtual screening event. So wherever you're at, you can access it. Um, but it'll be from January 18th to January 30th is the first oh, virtual wow. screening that we're doing. And wow. so I think it's going to be translated. I think it'll be available in like nine languages for this first round. What? And hopefully more. Yeah, hopefully more yeah. for subsequent viewing. Wow. So right now, Danny says, hello, gorgeous ladies. Do you mean me also, Danny? <laughs> Never mind. And, and Lorraine, we're so happy you're here. Lorraine's from Canada. I haven't seen you in a while. And Fran is here from Australia. And we have other people watching. So say hello and tell us where you're from. So this is exciting. Um, you know, because my experience with all rage, and God bless Michael Galinsky, took him 10 years. And you see in the movie, it was like, get the goddamn camera. We got, you know, like he had difficulty finding a subject and all, and, and, and Dr. Sona got to see it. But the beauty of this is you, you were just driven and everything just fell into place, mm -hmm. you know, which, which, and you, you had a star, you had a character and you, like all, all the ducks just were aligned, it seemed. And what, what do you make of that, those blessings <laughs> after you're watching your partner, you know, struggle in heal in, in pain, you're getting these blessings. So what are you making of that? Just to start mm -hmm. there. Is that a question for me? Then, well, or you want to go? I actually have something to say about that. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so my yeah. chronic pain journey started actually in 2017. And I won't get into all the details, but the fact is, you know, my partner is a filmmaker and she was like, wow, this is really a crazy journey because I was exploring all of the things that you think are going to help, right? Chiropractor, physical therapy, I mean, the gamut. And I was just progressively getting worse, frankly. And Chrisanna says to me, I'm going to start documenting your journey. And I was like, why? What do you mean? And she said, you to be honest, to that, yeah. yeah, like what, what, what are we going to do with this? Why does it even matter? And so she started documenting it just little by little different milestones or things that we thought would help that unfortunately did not. I mean, I put my, my body through a lot of different traumatic modalities thinking it was going to help. And so Chrisanna is following my journey. And in the meantime, we get connected with this beautiful organization. We go on a meditation, you know, retreat essentially to really try to cope with the chronic pain because nothing else was working. And wow. so Chrisanna is documenting this journey. Meanwhile, we're connected to this retreat center uh, for our own, you know, healing experiences. And she ended up doing a little bit of video work for them because while she's documenting my journey, I said to her, we should share this with them so they can use it for their own organization. And they were like, who is this person? And they're amazing at filmmaking. <laughs> we want to work with them. So you're right, Toba, all of the pieces fell into place. And before you knew it, we're on this journey together. We're on this healing journey, but at the same time, um, you know, Chrisanna was looked at like, oh my gosh, you could really help us tell the story of this mind-body connection and how important these practices are to the healing journey. And so when they asked her to do this documentary um, and the executive producer, Ilji Lee, heard about my story and the fact that, you know, I'm on my journey right now, he was like, of course you should be the character and the protagonist. And it just worked out that we have all this footage of my entire experience that we get to share in the film in addition to bringing new people on the journey with us that have not experienced yeah. practices right. so we're going to talk about that we're going to yeah. talk about that that's amazing first of all i'm so sarah sarah is from here from israel there's another sarah here from upstate new york there's evan Ir, irvin from germany and kelly i haven't seen you on here from mexico so really talk about um international very excited welcome what about welcome. canada you yeah. forgot lorraine canada and she, no, I said I said hello and Betty. I said hello to them before before you came on. But, oh. And Rose is here from. Where are you at in Australia, Rose? Where are you visiting um, now? I'm uh, in a place called Victor Harbour, which is in country South Australia, and I'm across the road from the beach. And I had to come inside because the birds were too noisy out there. <laughs> So I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> okay, well, we're glad you're here. So, and could, yeah. could, I just, could I just mention that, you yes. know, we're made for love and mm -hmm. it's important to remember that, that our whole essence is about love. And in philosophy we learned that there were four types of love. And, you know, there's 
variations of that within our lives all the time, all over the place. Filial love, uh, agape, um, uh, connection love. There are so many loves and there's so much to be mined in this movie. And it's just so lovely to have both of you ladies on. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. Yeah. And, and and love is so it's so it's it, it isn't it true, Rose, that the essence of love is okay. just so it, it, in our in our human bodies. It's 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 it's. it's I guess I want to say it's primal. It is. Yes, it is. And also, it creates a glow in the body. It raises the temperature a little bit. And it just creates this flow um, and the vasovagal system becomes yes. in tune. So we don't need pain when we actually experience that sense of deep love within us. It's not so much the love of a partner or the love of God or whatever. It's that sense, that core within us that we're loved and lovable and that we can radiate it. So, yeah. That's what, that's what it's, it's science. That's why it's so chemical. And um, <clears throat> I think Rose and I can agree that we, you know, we talk to people a lot about loving what they don't love. You know, the paradox. Loving like anger. What they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love your anger, I say. <laughs> right, right. Don't have rage, but right. just see that heat in you so that you become defended. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, ladies, away from <clears throat> us and back anyway. to you guys. So, no, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, Rose. Beautiful. Um, so I, this is where I want to go. I want I want to share with the audience um, pretty much the, the 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 version of you 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 to say you know you had some, you had two surgeries that one that that did that failed. I just say it failed, or that you weren't you were still in chronic pain. Krasana started um, filming it as 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 your your partner started filming it and saying let's get this on film and then to so go from there because basically did you. I just we want to talk more about also you saw this retreat as going to heal you and help you and then you brought in others so you were thinking about others as well you wasn't just like i want to get healed and do this you were already thinking about others which is also healing and also love so it's all it's all, it's all back to the same premise but go ahead and start the story step by step and the two of you i'd love to to have you share together step by step the story yeah, absolutely. So it's very interesting because when I started filming, I think I didn't have an intention as much as I was, I felt really hopeless. Uh, we were in such a dark place that I thought, I don't know, if, like, I think this might be the end. Like our life's going to look like this forever. You know how when you're in the deepest suffering, it just feels like it's going to last forever. So I couldn't figure out what to do, <laughs> except that I knew my camera has always been like a guide for me. It's always been a source of some sort of like, um, I don't know. The ground. Yeah, yeah, because it's like, yeah, yeah, it's just there's like something about feeling in the story, like becoming the observer and saying, oh, this is actually something I'm experiencing versus, you know, I'm a victim of this. But we very much felt like victims for a long time. And anyway, a lot of this is detailed in the film. So I'm like, I want to give details that maybe aren't in the film. But really, um, I was just capturing it. And there were, there were plenty of moments that I didn't capture because they were too sacred. They were too painful. And Dana would look at me and say, I can't. Like when she came home from the hospital after the second surgery, she was sobbing. And I put my phone up to record it, not out of anything other than I just felt like this was a very important moment. And she was like, stop, stop, stop. And she doesn't even remember that because she was so doped up. Like she had so many drugs in her body. So there was many times where I was like, oh, I actually can't record this. And so I'm grateful for the times when she would let me record. And just because I thought, if anything, maybe at the end of this, whenever there's an end, we'll look back and see how far we've come. So that was like my intention. And yeah, we had gone to Sedona and Dana literally came back from the hospital and said, I have to go back to the, that Sedona retreat. I have to go back, I have to go back. I'm like, you can't even move, you're on bed rest. Like, you can't even get out of bed. You can't walk. There's no way we're going back to Sedona. And she would just say it over and over. I have what do you mean? Oh, I missed it. What do you mean go back? She had been there before? Yeah. So that's what we talked about in the film. We've been, we went in 2017. Yeah. Uh, for a retreat. And it really was incredible. And it was, it was mostly like, it's called finding true self. And so it was all about connecting to your soul. And that was a really powerful experience that we were hoping would help Dana, like, 
released a lot of chronic pain. And while it helped both of us, we stopped drinking after that retreat. Like we both had incredible healing breakthroughs, but her pain continued to get worse. And so that we just continued to seek options until we felt we had exhausted all options and they were pushing for surgery. And that's when she had surgery in 2020, right? As COVID was putting us all in lockdown and, and hospitals didn't allow visitors. And March of 2020, she went in for her first surgery. Would you mind telling us what you had that created the need for surgery? Just yeah. so that our visitors can actually resonate with it so that they can actually pick up that this surgery doesn't work. I mean, Dr. Haskam, yeah. on about that, but from your point of view, how mm -hmm. the surgery might make a difference in a certain way, but it doesn't ever heal people. Can mm -hmm. you, can you yeah. just tell us what exactly it was that you were told? You bet. So I actually had an injury in, a, in one of my calves and then it never really healed. It started into the other leg and then eventually up my right side of my leg into my sciatica area and then I started to have lower back pain. So there was a lot that took place in between all of that but ultimately I had an MRI that showed uh, a herniated disc at L5 S1, spinal stenosis, some disc degeneration, all of the things that make somebody we really afraid like what is going on and and i thought oh my gosh as much as i hated to hear all of that it was also in my opinion the answer like it was the answer that was it now i know what's right. wrong and so in my mind i didn't know how deep the mind body connection was because my nervous system from a whole lot of trauma throughout my life has been on high alert and i didn't know that pain is really in the brain and it's caused by more than just a structural problem in your body, not just pain, but chronic illness and other issues. So I went into the surgery thinking, okay, I'm going to come out a different human because some do, frankly, I don't know how much of that is placebo or if it's a real structural thing that gets taken care of. Yeah, that I was. Think, I, think, I think it's more placebo. Yeah. Well, Dr. Hanscom actually, Dr. Hanscom actually said, Dana, at a 50-50, he, he can't say either way whether or not she needed surgery. He yeah. said there's a chance she did, and there are plenty of people that do need surgeries. So uh, I actually reworked a section of the film for those who saw it previously. I'd love for you to see it again now that it's going to go live tomorrow because I reworked a section of the film because we're not saying that surgery is not helpful. But in this case, uh, we don't know. But at the end of the day, Dana's deepest self told her not to have surgery. She, she kept saying, I don't feel surgery is the answer. I don't feel surgery is the answer. I think everybody has to go inside. I don't mean to interrupt you, but yes, I think everybody right. has to go inside and decide that for themselves. Cause sometimes I think it is, you know, that's, that's what, that's one of the great, great things about Western medicine. The problem as David Hanscom says is that they're throwing out spine surgeries sometimes like candy. It's just like, oh, you're in pain. Let's do surgery. And in this yes. case, especially her nervous system was ramped up. She was so traumatized prior to that. He said, the issue was that when she had surgery, she was in a heightened state. And mm. that's the and time. My, my, my experience over the years, and I say this on, the, on, on film, you know, on the camera, if she had had this work with the surgery, I think she would have come out different. I agree. Yes. I agree. Yes. So that's just, well, that's, but that's, that's in the past, and this is now, and you are on your healing journey. So really good point. And um, the movie's on all week. We can watch it all week. We can watch it over and over again. That's right. <laughs> From the yes, 18th to the 30th. Um, for anyone out there listening, the information's all on the Facebook page. I put it up a few times. So we'll mention that also at the end of the show. But the uh, movie is being premiered tomorrow for, for 12 days. OK, so get ahead. So this is very interesting. So um, continue, please, where you were at. OK. <laughs> OK. So um, sorry to distract you all. No, actually, everything that you're offering is really helpful and beneficial for other people to hear. So by all means. Um, but my hope was going into surgery, it was going to change everything. Obviously not doing any of these practices to calm my nervous system prior. And what I for neglected to mention is they started out with a um, spinal injection, 
that went dreadfully wrong. I had, I believe I had some nerve damage that started in that moment when I was getting that injection. That's and when you so struggled to walk. I, yeah, I was nervous that I wasn't gonna be able to walk much anymore. My right foot started to lose its ability to function. And so it was just one thing after another uh, as I went through that process. So the first surgery, I was very hopeful. I woke up and you'll see photos of me, like I'm always smiling because I thought, oh, I'm gonna be, great after this <laughs> and i never felt better it was like something felt really wrong and i will um spare you the gruesome details but i had a spinal fluid leak that landed me back in the hospital seven weeks later for emergency surgery and they couldn't really fix it they tried and they did sutures and it ripped my dura even more and the spinal fluid leak went crazy and I was in ICU and they were bypassing my spinal fluid every 20 minutes for seven straight days. And I was flat on my back and they were trying to get that leak to stop. When the leak was stopped, they put lots of patches on it. Oh. So the concern was that, you were very drugged during this time. Yeah. The concern was that the patches would not hold because yeah. her dura was so weak, the patches were creating new holes. Right. So they had to keep her on bed rest in the ICU for seven days, just hoping that it would heal and not continue to yeah, break open up. Could I just right. use that example for a moment for people yeah, to see that the dura mater heals within a week. Mm. It self heals. The body heals itself. And the yeah. dura mater is the most important part. It holds our spinal fluid in. And when it leaks, we actually can't even sit up because we lose the, um, the fluid to our brain. So it's the most important thing to keep us alive and it'll take a week or even a little bit longer to heal. So, so the patching created more problems within, mm -hmm. within, the, within the body, but the body actually heals. And if the people that are watching us see that if, if the body can heal there, it can heal everywhere. So mm -hmm. just, just to point, point that out. Great yeah, point. point. Mm -hmm. The dora matter is very strong now. Your dora matter is very strong now. The walls, yeah, they're like the walls. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're iron walls. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, all I know is while I was laying there uh, in more pain than I'd ever experienced in my life, I had a lot of regret. I I didn't want to wake up the next day. It was really mortifying. And to do that on my own, I didn't have a single solitary person that could come visit me. And even all the nurses that came in were protecting themselves. I was on a unit full of COVID and it was very traumatizing. And so the things that I thought were gonna help me actually traumatized myself, my body, my nervous system even more. So it was like, after all of this happened, to have something shift several months later for Chrisanna to be asked to do this documentary, it was like for it was the- Almost a year. It was it that long? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, so it's just been amazing. Christiana, can you just talk yeah. about the emotional impact as as the next of kin of a person going through that? Because all yeah. of our pain sufferers have got family members that support them or or dismiss them, varying. So just would you? I can see a tear in your eye virtually as you were as you were talking. So would you mind sharing that a little bit now with us, so that we can mm. we can actually see the pain and suffering that the partners go through as well. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, I will never, I will never diminish what Dana has gone through. I think for mm -hmm. myself, there's a, there's a different type of helplessness when you watch someone mm -hmm. suffer that yeah. you care about so deeply and you realize there's not anything you can do to take it away or make it better. So for me, uh, that is not something I'm used to because I've always been a caretaker in my family. I was always a peacemaker and it's just like my superpower. I can help people and I do it to the detriment of myself with codependency and all that. Um, and in this case, yeah, my codependency was on like high alert. And at the same time, I'm watching the strongest person I know suffer and realizing this level of helplessness that I didn't know I could, I could feel. And to be honest with you, I think, I'm like recognizing this in this moment. Um, there was a lot of my faith I had deconstructed and being gay and being rejected by the church. But during that time, I found a new kind of faith. 
and a faith that was like rooted in something really deep that I wasn't taught, but that I felt that we were always supported when we were held and that at some point this would make sense. And so I would pray every day and I would just like believe at some point this is going to make sense, but also I need help. And so I'm like praying to angels and, you know, I've got like all these people helping me, but uh, yeah, I think it caused me to like go inside really, really deep and believe in something deeper within myself and also just like trust in a greater plan and and trust my instincts. So when my instinct said we should just start filming some footage, then I was like, OK, maybe this is part of my healing. And I also I mean, I just ma maxed out my resources. I was like in therapy as much as I could be because my therapist really I mean, our therapist isn't in the film she probably should be because she was such a critical part of our journey and she actually ended up seeing dana too even though that was like against her policy she started seeing both of us because we needed so much help so there were so many avenues that i reached out to but um yeah i, so, yeah. I just realized i have no control and that's a good lesson for life like i had no control yeah well i just saw that deep ache in your heart as you were listening and uh, I just wanted to bring it out. And I also want to bring out the fact that, you know, you, you turn to a higher power. And that's mm -hmm. the sort of part of agape, that part of love, mm -hmm. of letting go and letting the world be what it is. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, uh, I'm a little emotional. But it's all good. It's all good because it 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 simply brings out the... the um, the synergy, I mean, Dana Dana had someone like, of course her mother loves her and her father loves her, but this is like, you know, you're just you're just connecting to her in such a way. And and um I kind of lost my train of thought, but I, I'm very look, my mother had MS and I and I tried to help her and I felt so hopeless and helpless, and that's kind of why I'm helping people every minute today because I want to make up for that. So it's kind of I think that's what I want to say. It becomes you know, a, 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 a road that you'll take. And it's, it's, it, you're probably meant to be on that road. Like this was all mm -hmm. meant to happen. And yeah. it's beautiful that you developed faith in yourself, in the relationship, in people. And I mean, doctors make mistakes. The doctor did the best he could. You know, we're not here to bash doctors at all. I have pain, I take an Advil. I'm not, you know, it's just about, the relationship that you developed through the negative you found the gift you found the you know the, the, the prize and the gift in something so dark you just said there must be some place to rise from here and you didn't stay there and that's what rose and i we also talked to some people about um sometimes it, people like the dark they they, they find mm -hmm. they get comfortable with the dark and you're like okay this is my life this is dark but i'm go i'm i'm moving and you were in motion. That's why I see that like in nine months you have a movie. I mean, there was motion, love, and motion, and, act, and that's what you knew. it was like. And it wasn't, and you were in touch with the deepest parts of each other. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's, it's like the formula for healing is just to keep connecting and keep loving. And um, I think what I would love to ask you, and I know Rose would be interested maybe to know also about, you know, the feelings of fear. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, I'm saying with the feelings of fear, like you said, like, is this my life? You talk mm. about sure, that. but not only that, she was in hospital on her own with the nursing staff wearing gowns and a mask and no one to speak to. And you were probably even unable to use your phone, were you? Mm, barely. It was like I wasn't really in a good state of mind. They couldn't get my pain under control, so they had to call in a specialist to, like, max me out. So I wasn't... Yeah really feeling great mentally in addition to physically. So Chrisanna was really in my lifeline though. I would find ways to contact her. We would talk on the phone. Um, I don't have a lot of recollection. I have some really, really vivid memories of things that happened to me in the hospital, um, but it was really rough. And when you talk about like how love, oh, I feel a emotional myself because when I came home, to this human <laughs> who was full of love and compassion, but we were both full of a lot of fear, like yeah. massive fear. And I will never forget, I knew this situation was gonna like 
make us the strongest couple we've ever could ever be, or it would break us apart because it was really hard and very dark. And Chrisanna talks about like the codependency piece, she just wanted to fix me and she couldn't. Mm -hmm. And so I'll never forget two weeks after the second surgery, I looked at her and I said, I'm done with these pain meds. I'm in so much pain and these pain meds are making me crazy, but I can't do it. And she was mortified. She was actually angry. Mm -hmm. And she just thought, oh my gosh, I feel like if you get off of these, it's going to make things 10 times worse. But it was those but decisions. Did it, did it? No. It didn't. No, actually. exactly. <laughs> it didn't. I got off the gabapentin, all the pain meds. Anything. It wasn't helping a single thing. And so no, I think it's like it just does the right. That. yeah. That's right. And my brain wasn't functioning right. I was just in a fog. I was I wasn't myself. So I thought, you know, I'd rather have a lot of pain, but have who I am still somewhere in there. Like I was just in this, yeah, yeah. it wasn't good for me. And so Chrisanna was upset and it's not like we had anybody to come over and help navigate this with us. So it was just her and I figuring out what the next step was. So it's amazing. It is remarkable. Tova, when you say nine months, Chrisanna literally filmed, she narrated, she wrote the story. She, all the cinematography, like 90% of it obviously is her unless she's in it. She color corrected, audio mastered, created this entire thing in nine months. And it was like, this is why it gave a purpose to my pain. I look back and I think, if this film helps even one person, if this story, and it's not just my story, it's Chrisanna's story, but it's also exactly. in part everybody's story because yep. everybody has suffered at some point or watched somebody they deeply love and care about suffer. And I feel like our film really captures the essence of all of that. And it just gives me great hope for people to I mean, my hope is that it takes them out of that dark place that I know very well and that victimhood and they can say, you know what, my life isn't what I thought it would be right now. I'm not physically capable of doing things that I love, I miss, but you know what, I get to live today and there are things that I'm so grateful for every day of my life and it's like letting go of all of these preconceptions and expectations and where I want to be and just figuring out what can I do today? And that's what I started to do little by little. I mean, I was flat on my back in our living room for months. Yes, you said, let's, let's start from flat on your back. You come home yeah. together, you get off the meds, then what happened? So I get off the meds and I'm laying there for way too many days, way too many things to think about. I, in the meantime, I found you ladies and Danny Fagan, my TMS yes, journey. Mention that, mention that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something that started to shift and I was on Instagram and I had this like hashtag chronic pain and I found Danny and actually Danny Fagan, who is amazing. She had suffered herself and I, her story is so brilliant and I'm not going to um, go She's into too much detail. Twice. We had her on our show twice already. Exactly. And because you had her on your show, I actually found out about the work that you were both doing. But the Curable app also is what really started this journey. I got a Facebook ad and it was like, you know, are you suffering from chronic pain? I'm like, oh my gosh, am I ever? And so it started this idea that there are other practices out there, understanding the science behind what is actually happening in our brains and how it memorizes these pain signals after a period of time. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then how beneficial meditation and expressive writing are to get out all of these things that we've had trapped in us for decades like how how to do that and so it just started to unfold from there i found out about john sarno's work i read the mind body prescription book and i was like reading all of my life wrapped up in a book it was like yes this is me danny, said, uh, danny, danny says when she, when she talked about the book i'll never forget she said i didn't even need to use uh, a highlighter because the book was all about me <laughs> I didn't even need to use a highlighter because everything was me. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the book was well, really all I know is that stuff gave me hope, right? So as soon as something triggers in your brain and it gives you hope that you're understanding yourself better and that there are tools out there that you can use. And at the same time, Chrisanna had been to a Tony Robbins conference, Unleash the Power Within. And she's like, it was during COVID and it was the first time they did a virtual one. So I'm on bed rest and she's like, we're doing it. And I was like, you're out of your mind. 
She's like, no, we're going to immerse ourselves in anything that's going to bring us like hope and joy. And so we well, I know it would create a shift. It did. That's what, that's what he does. Tony Robbins yeah. is brilliant at creating a shift. Right. And can I add real quick? Yeah. This is a cool story. So to, to what you were saying, Kova, uh, we actually had a gentleman come who is a master from Sedona Mago and we just became friends with him. What's Sedona, Mago? What's Sedona Mago? The retreat the center. center. The retreat center. And Don anyway, Mago. yeah, Sedona Mago. So we, he came to visit. We weren't even like letting people come in our house. And I said, well, you can have a mask, but he just wanted to check on Dana and was curious how she was doing. So anyway, he comes into our house all masked up and we talked to him and it was just like a beautiful visit. And then he asked us, what are you guys going to create? And I, I looked at him so offended. Like, what are you even talking about? She's on bed rest. Like we can't create anything right now. And he said, what can you create? Like, what can you create out of this season of darkness? And I couldn't hear it at that time, but a seed wow. was planted. And then we ended up doing the Tony Robbins conference and all, that talk about your physiology changes your psychology. I mean, that is what he does. Tony Robbins gets you into your body to help shift your brain. And all of a sudden we started to envision a beautiful future mm -hmm. and think about what life could look like. And of course, back then I couldn't have predicted that it would lead to finishing a film. But it was so interesting how I feel the universe of just like planting little seeds, even in the darkest of our darkness. It's true. Yeah. You and manifest, and you know, it's hard. It's hard to manifest and create when you're, it's hard. It's like, how, but it's, it's like one step at a time to envision, to draw pictures, to journal, to it's, it's really, it's, it's really, it's, it sounds woo woo. I know it does, but it's very, it's very grounded in the universe because you begin to create your experience. Mm -hmm. So you are in control and you, it is very, very real. Anyway, enough about me. Go ahead. Continue. I have one thing to add that I would be disappointed if I forgot to say, because in addition to all of these things, when I found Dr. Hanscom and we'll talk more about him, I know in a future experience, but he, I found him through Curable, and it was the first time I heard a spine surgeon say some really important things about spine surgery and how ineffective they can be and how most people, if you take an MRI of their spine, have bulging discs, herniated discs, and all these things that I had, and I was mortified. I remember almost like falling because this was a few months after bed rest, and I was just like, what, have I, what has happened? What have I done? And one thing that that man provided me at the time I needed it most is community. He actually has spent his life now, you know, quitting his practice, figuring out how to help people with these, you know, practices, help heal their lives, or at least find hope and enjoy their life as much as they can. But it was in having a community. I mean, I would just lay there or I would sit there and like put my little headphones on and do this session with other people who we're suffering, but you know what was different? We weren't there talking about our pain. We were there talking about other things and helping us understand how we got to where we were and what we can do to better our lives. Like all of these little things were happening and it really shifted everything. And then when this documentary opportunity came and then we really dug deep into the energy principles and practices that like solidified everything I was learning by masters of this practice and then traveling to talk to scientists and, and medical doctors who actually can speak to the science of all of these things. It was like, pff, our life is forever changed. Yeah, truly. I like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys talked to Bruce Lipton and Les and David Hanscom and you were like, I just have to say that I don't think, I, I have a picture of the, the Kleenex from that film. I mean, it was just <laughs> so, it's emotional in the, most loving way and people were and look you know a lot of the movies about heal and you know and even the sarna movie there wasn't the people here were really t coming up with their feelings and really sharing about their feelings and so that you guys captured that mm. you guys captured that in such a beautiful way that Thank that you. there's a connection there's a something something about love and feelings whether they're, it's anger or rage or guilt, there's some deep, and what I call a love affair with your body. Like you love your body now, Dana. You're now loving your body. You're not hating the doctors. You're, 
You're dealing with whatever, but you love your body, and that's the healing, is this love affair. <clears throat> this anyway, journey so of hitting rock bottom is the first time that I started to look inward. I didn't even know that I didn't really love myself or have love for my body or accept myself until this happened. It was like hitting rock bottom and then doing the work, doing that inner work. I was like, oh my gosh, I was just going along my life thinking everything was fine. And something had to literally put me flat on my back to realize that that wasn't living. I was just existing. And I didn't really have, I, I thought I loved like others really deeply. And I have my, my superpower is compassion and I love helping and I, I just, but it wasn't there for myself and I did not know it. So not having that acceptance and love for myself and my body, I thought my body was my enemy for the longest time. And it was oh, like- What a wonderful thing to, yeah. That, you've hit the nail on the head there. You thought your body was your enemy yeah. and yet you needed to have work. You know, just would you just sort of talk a minute about how you had to work to actually get yourself out of that pit? Because that's another thing that that um, people with chronic pain, they're in this pit and they can't undo the pit and it takes work. It takes like a mountain climb, you know. It, it takes grasping every little niche, doesn't it? Can you mm. now expand that and how that niche, all those niches came together for you? Mm. Yeah, that's a big question. That was quite the journey because it really started with, um, I, and I know that we're not like plugging certain things or certain people, but to be honest, that curable app gave me the roadmap to say, mm. here are some things you can do. And I would look at Chrisanne and be like, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to write about some like events in my past. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for this. And then I found Nicole Sachs who talks about like journal speak. And so that started to unfold. So that was really one area, Rose, that I can say I was really against. Yeah. I'm not a journaler. I'm not going to write. I don't need to express. I wore the fact that I never got angry as a badge of honor. Like I'm always, <laughs> I love it. nobody makes me <laughs> angry. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm the opposite. This one is a spitfire. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like recognizing that, wait a minute, I have a right to express my emotion. It's okay. And in fact, it's very healing to express. That's the work. Yes. That's the work. And I wasn't doing it. I, I didn't know. And I would say what I observed in Dana, which became true for me, even though I didn't have chronic pain, Although I recognize years ago, I had lots of TMS symptoms, by the way, story for another day, but uh, lots of stress, stress illness issues that when, once we got together, they all went away. And it's very interesting because I had a lot of emotional pain and a lot of pain from childhood and stuff from my past. And I, I think the one thing that I can say, if I were to narrow this all down to one, is the body is the pathway. 100%. The body is the pathway because your brain... I mean, even I, th I believe in journaling, I believe in talk therapy and all of this. I think it's very, very powerful. There's something about if you want to shift your state, the fastest way is to connect to ourselves. And there's some sort of calm, peaceful place within that we can access quickly. And then I think we're ready to do the work. And that's really mm -hmm. what the power like of the retreat was, is how do we get in an intensive place where we're getting in our bodies, finding zero point, and then the brain's ready to heal. It's ready to release. But before that, I couldn't talk my way out of the victim state no. that I was in. Dana was like doing all this work and we were still feeling like victims. Mm -hmm. And then it was when we shifted our energy and our bodies yes. that something act tangibly started to feel different. So at what point, so, maybe at what point did you, so the guy came from the retreat and then you what, did Tony Robbins and then you stopped taking the pills. Like, so, so I like the timeline. So at what mm -hmm. point did it like, we're making a movie with this Korean master you know, like, at what point, like, we haven't even talked about him yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all that work was really, really, most of what we talked about was the first year before we mm -hmm. were, before we were enlisted to do the film. And so Dana, I had just been documenting her journey from March 2020 until really March 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't sure what we would do with this footage. We thought, well, maybe one day we'll tell the story of this in some way. Yeah, but and, let me just say one thing. Yeah, yeah. During that year, I do have to say, I started to have this inkling that the body really was the pathway to finding the peace and acceptance for where I was. 
I didn't know that really, but Danny's work with the yoga stuff is the first time in all of my recovery that I had someone that understood what I was going through pre and post surgery and gave me movements because I, they terrify you to move your body. You're going to re herniate your disc. Don't twist. Don't bend. Don't. I was like, don't do yoga. I don't do yoga literally. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to break my spine if I do something again. And so I just want to say that Danny's um, yoga for TMS, like is the first thing that I did with my body that I was like, oh, I actually can, I would just cry because I thought this is what I know I need, but I was so terrified to do. So once I started to get into my body and started to connect that piece, I would find peace with my body and my brain because they're one entity, they're one. And I just, I was missing that piece. It was like I was cut off from the neck down and I disregarded That's my right. body because it was so painful. So a, a year later, we get into this documentary work and I'm like, oh my gosh, the biggest missing link was this. Mm -hmm. So, I'll and we had, so after the retreat, basically the Layson Foundation. So, um, Il Shili is the founder of Brain Education, which you'll see in the film. And essentially, Brain Education, it, you know, I won't probably do it justice in my understanding. I'm, there's like, I'm still learning so much about it, but it's taking all of these ancient healing modalities and making them. Uh, relevant to present day. So tapping and going within and connecting your mind and body. There's all of these ancient practices that he like be, had his own journey of healing and enlightenment and just dedicated his life to bringing this to the world. Mm -hmm. So he created throughout the world, this, these pra uh, this practice basically exists throughout the world and it's called different things in different countries. So in the United States, it's called body and brain, Tai Chi and yoga. And after we went to the retreat center, which is also brain education, we started going to body and brain, Tai Chi and yoga, and actually made some incredible progress and learned so much about connecting to energy and Qigong. But once Dana had spine surgery, we stopped everything because we were terrified of doing anything. So then a year later, we go back, we start doing body and brain, Tai Chi and yoga. And around that same time when she was finally cleared to be allowed to do some of this stuff, that was when we got the call about, would you guys be interested in doing a documentary? And at the time it was just me, it was just asking me if I would yeah. be interested. And I was like- Who called, who called you? So basically this woman, Sohyun, who works for Il Chi Lee, I've done some work with her in the past and she called me and said, would you be interested? And I was like, I don't know, I barely worked. <laughs> like I hadn't really worked at that time. Um, and she was like, well, you know, if you'll just like meet with us and hear what we hear the kind of the idea. And at that time it was a completely different idea, but same, same concept of how do we, how do we share with the world, the power of mind body connection and the power of energy of balancing our energy. And I was like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, talk about something really cool to do as a first big project after, after COVID and hadn't really worked that much, much that year. But uh, then in our discussions, Il Chili was like, well, what if Dana, what if, you know, you just go on this journey and do this energy balance for yourself. And then we document that. And I had already had that idea, but I didn't want to be the person that was like, oh, look, we should feature my girlfriend <laughs> in this project. Uh, so it was very interesting, the synergy. I had the same idea and then he said it and I was like, yes, I, I have all this footage. And he didn't know any of that. He didn't know that I had footage. So it just kind of came together and like, how do we do this in a way that's authentic? We're not trying to fake anything. Mm -hmm. We're trying to just deliver like real, people's real journeys. Well, if we just show Dana, then anyone who doesn't have Dana's experience may not be able to connect. So what if we find people from all different backgrounds, chronic pain and illness, but also emotional pain and people who are struggling with the loss of a family member, like just from all different walks of life, anyone ready for transformation, can this help them? And so that's really what you see in the last half of the film or last three quarters of the film is real. We wanted it to just be like, what is the authentic story that's taking place? And of course our authentic story is in there, mm -hmm. but uh, that's why it was very important to me. I spent countless hours trying to think like, how do I show everything that we filmed in such mm -hmm. a way that uh, it's really? just it's very true to us, but also is helpful to the planet. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fantastic. Now tell us about your Korean mm -hmm. master. Because, you know, yeah. that's been sidestepped all along. Can we oh, get into that a bit more? Yeah. Yeah. So Il Chi Lee is just this beautiful human who had his own awakening. Actually, he has written so many books. So I think in Call of Sedona, it's really powerful. Mm. He talks about 
like his journey to going within. And he started connecting to energy himself. He kind of had like this existential crisis of not knowing why he was here. And so he went through his own awakening journey, which I don't want to try to explain it because it's not my story. Uh, maybe in the future, we'll create some content that explains it really beautifully. But basically, as he started to connect to energy, he realized like there's something about this. Very there is some, and he started, yeah, just learning this ancient wisdom for himself. <laughs> and then he started speaking in the park to people who were like injured or had issues. And all these, all these people <laughs> were healing. All these people started to recover their health. And so then he thought, well, how do I spread this with all of this country? And so now in South Korea, this practice, uh, what is it called in Korea? Don yoga. Don yoga. Like yeah. yeah. But very, it's very common. Yeah. And also in South Korea, connecting to energy is very common. Like people are doing Qigong in the parks. I mean, this is, this has just become such an accepted part of their culture. So people there were very open and ready to hear like about more of these ancient practices and they have tons of members there. And then he started to look at spreading this throughout the world and he kept feeling called to Sedona. So that's like a whole separate story, but he actually came to the United States with very little money and then discovered Sedona. And from there, like bought the retreats, the land for the retreat center and has like developed other organizations. And it's really, really remarkable because in essence, he's, he's like a humanitarian. He just, anything that comes to him, he's all about like being in service of the planet. And so they really are all about like creating earth citizens and people who are cultivating health within so that we can cultivate healing in the planet. So that's, that's, I'm not even going to do it justice, like all that goes into what he's about, but he has things happening all over the planet related to brain education. And even in El Salvador, they like the whole country has been transformed using brain education. So yeah, that'll be another story that we'll probably tell. I, I, think, I think just for our listeners. It looks like you've got a new career going, you girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But for our listeners, I believe and um, that what he's talking about Brain education is what curable is. It's what the neural pathway is. It's what the, mm -hmm. you know, that we can't get rid of the old pathway. We have to create a new, healthier one that we can. That will be our default. That will go to there and become an automatic um, mess message. Is is that kind of the same thing that that brain education? Yeah, is? you know, I wish yeah. I wish that Dr. Erica Crawford was on this call because she dedicated <laughs> five years of her life researching brain education and could speak about it so much better. <laughs> But uh, that's why we have her as part of the film because she had her own yeah, healing great. experience and then just said, how does this work? And uh, it's really just putting a methodology around what we already know. Like people are all speaking you know, about the same thing and maybe different languages, but we're all having, I think the same conversation. And he's just trying to make it in a way that's really accessible to the masses. How do we share about this in a way that people can grasp it? And realize that the power is in the brain. You know, like right. we can truly heal ourselves when we when we understand that. Well, and this film well, is based guess. on. Oh, sorry, I will just throw this in really fast. The film okay. is based on his book Water Up, Fire Down, and basically that is the the energy principle of having a cool head and fire in your belly. It's like a very um, natural state of being for us. And brain education really talks about that, but. That practice, the same thing is said by all the other experts that you all work with. It's like, it all has to do with the nervous system, creating those new you know, brain pathways that are those that don't have pain in them, right? We're connecting new circuits in our brain and it all comes back to settling ourselves and our nervous system being in the place where we can be in that rest and repair and all of those things. And that energy balance just is the same it all creates that same, whether people get it through meditation. Some people can obtain a lot of healing through these other modalities, expressive writing, David Hanscom himself. He said, I practice mindfulness and expressive writing, but what is that doing? It's creating the right energy flow. He's quiet, he's in his body, he's not like all in his brain. So it's all the same things. We're just saying it in different ways. And I will add, and then I'll let you all continue. Sorry, I will add the reason that we really wanted to focus on brain education is because from my understanding, and I could be wrong, but I've heard this from others, I don't know of any other practice in the world that combines all of these elements into one piece. And so like in, with body and brain, Tai Chi and yoga, you're actually getting like emotional, physical, spiritual, mind, body, <laughs> like practices for all of these things. It's not just one segmented piece. And they have training that goes back so many years um, that to really facilitate that. So in talking to a lot of people who've done this practice, the change that they experience is drastic and very quick. 
because not for everybody, but some people it is because it's, I think the, the, the uh, magic sauce is that it's all encompassing. It's not just focusing on one piece. It's giving you so many tools and helping you like immerse yourself in it very quickly. Wow. I just want to mention <laughs> for our audience that we've got Dr. Bethany Rains coming next week, mm -hmm. who actually is going to be talking about, uh, about the brain. So it's, there's so much synergy in, going on in this, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. can't wait. Wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you make a point about like 10,000 years, I mean, ancient. I don't think there's anything new that we're saying. And that's where, you know, but everyone will be attracted to a certain road, a certain healing. I mean, my fantasy is this, this would be in the schools. Our children will be learning this. We don't have so to. They're already it. doing it. They're doing it. New York. Yeah. Brain education. Yeah, the LA school system has started to implement some of these practices. New York has been going on for quite a while. And more and more school districts are trying to help them see that like how much this helps kids, especially kids in the inner city. So it's happening in the United States and then in El Salvador, it's already happening in all grades. Wow. They Amazing. they have this practice. Kids are meditating every day, they're tapping and they're just like working through their stuff. Well, your movie is gonna be what these kids are gonna watch in like home, ec home economics, <laughs> not the health but <clears throat> they're gonna watch Love Heals and all their age and they're gonna they're gonna have such a such a path. So That'd Rose, you have anything you want to say? I wanted to continue the this the, the story. Did you want to chime in anything, Rose? No, I just wanted to add just a moment ago that yeah. uh, Dr. Bethany Rains will actually expand on this more next week. For, Wonderful. For our viewers, yeah. I also wanted to write down uh, Ilchi's name. Can you tell me how to spell it? I L I L C H I C H I uh -huh. L E E. Yeah, and okay. and also include that um, what is it, cool, cool and hot or whatever it was. What is it? Yes, I love that. The uh, water up, fire down. down. Yeah, water, water up, fire down. Yeah. <laughs> and another good resource. Oh, sorry, go ahead. What was that? No, it's. I was just going to say on our website, uh, we are in the midst of creating a lot of resources for all of this stuff. Right now, we're really close to launching the new website. So we have a basic one, but we're going to have all of these resources on lovehealsfilm.com. And right now, that's where you can also purchase a ticket to see the film starting tomorrow. Good. Now, also, <clears throat> something else I did want to add. Could you, I haven't managed to write a review, but can you tell us about the reviewers, please? Because, you know, you pre-released pre it. Um, what was the feedback? You want to take this one? Mm, well, I think you got most of it. <laughs> I did. So, yes, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. We had people from all areas. Like, the reason it was pre-released, we had some VIPs, either people who were in the film, people that partnered with us, <laughs> donated a certain amount to, like, our Indiegogo Kickstarter, stuff like that. And we gave them the opportunity to give us direct feedback. We gave them a feedback form. And it was amazing to see the amount of positive feedback that we received from people who aren't familiar with these practices at all to people who have been immersed in them previously. It was like everybody we talked to could see themselves in a piece of our stories or somebody's stories within the film. Um, it was just, I, I feel like it's given a lot of people hope. And, and one of the things I loved was people saying, oh my gosh, I know 10 other people that are gonna benefit from this. I, they need to see this film because mm -hmm. I feel like it's gonna give them some tools and resources that they haven't had before. So I- I have two stories. Yeah. So one, uh, which I thought was really amazing, we saw this firsthand. We did one viewing with some of our friends who invited some of their friends and the people that they invited, we didn't know them and they, they didn't even know what they were watching. So we really were curious about that perspective. And one of the girls, she's probably early 20s. She said she's been in therapy for a lot of uh, different issues that she has. And her therapist has been talking to her about tapping and connecting to her body. And she's been very resistant. Like, that's not for me. And then she watched the film and she was just so like broken open by it and realized her preconceptions were not based on anything. And she's like, I'm going to go to therapy tomorrow and tell my <laughs> therapist I'm ready. I'm ready to do this body work. And I just thought, man, you know what? Forget anything else. 
if people walk away with an open mind about some modality, it doesn't matter what it is, anything that might help them, that's incredible. And then another story someone shared with us that their parents are very religious and they're just kind of like, oh, energy, that's too woo woo for me. Um, and so she had them watch the film and afterward they were so open and they wanted her to show them She's actually a master in this practice and they wanted her to show them some of the modalities so they could do it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's just like everything. I mean, we had maybe a, a few, maybe a handful of people that just had some, some bits of feedback and everything was helpful. Everything is like, oh, I'm so open to what people think and um, what they share. And of course, sometimes it's like, oh, this is my baby. And I don't know. Do you like it? But at the end of the day, people are going to uh, perceive it as they want to. And if we can make little tweaks that make it more understandable, that's fine. And I'm totally happy to do that. But what's amazing is like if someone is able to go into their heart space and open up to, to a new idea or a new concept that maybe they hadn't considered before, and maybe it just helps them in their healing journey or helps some, you know, them help someone they know who's feeling lost. That's it. That was the answer. That was the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the reviews are really thank yous, aren't they, in a way? Yeah. That's thank so you true. for the effort of putting it together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about it that way, but you're right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, there's so much gratitude. And it'll yeah. be amazing to see what the next however many days it is look like, week and a half that we're releasing. Well, have you, well like, I, I want to know how you got it into nine languages so already. Like, how did that work? So, so I mentioned her before. <laughs> She's like the other producer on this project. So her and Dan are the, the producers. And So Hyung is incredible. And because she's from South Korea and has lived here for 20 years, and she's been in this world of getting things translated internationally, because that's just what this organization does regularly. So she just put it out and made it happen very quickly. And I'm, I'm in awe of her. And she said there's like several more languages in the works. And I don't even know how she did it, but it's amazing. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, so, so there's subtitles in nine other languages. That's what she's telling me. I think so far we've, she's uploaded like four, four or five. But she said we should have nine. I think she's waiting on a few people, but wow. hopefully by okay, tomorrow. Maybe, yeah. maybe we can talk a little bit about, um, I know the process of, you, you, you know, I was talking to Dana before the show about the process of the other people in the movie that were blessed to be chosen and were really, you, you did such a magnificent job of, of focusing on these different people and their stories and the teachers. You just, I just noticed but us being close to Michael Galinsky, we know a little bit more about filming and, and shots and, and fit clipping. And I just see how you did it and you got beautiful nature. Krasana, you just did a beautiful job and it's just a beautiful movie. There's color and light and you come in and you go out and I, I felt very connected to it, you know, from, cause Rose and I got in close with Suki who's Michael's wife, and we ask them to help us with certain things. And I just see the life like, behind the camera. We also had two, many, we, have a couple, we had a couple of um, producers on our show. One was this guy doing docu-therapy. He's in Israel, and he documents um, people's traumas to help them come out of the trauma. And they call it docu-therapy. Remember Yonatan Nir Rose? And um, it was beautiful the way they, because as they went through their trauma, and I think that's what you did. You did docu-therapy. Oh, man. Wow. It was a therapy by putting you through the, um, you know, like there it's was. Called, this, it's called yes, Dolphin Boy. Dolphin Boy was what was one. Tell, tell the story real quickly about the boy and the therapy of the movie that helped the boy. <clears throat> you want to tell about the story? Rose? No. no. Just, okay. Anyway. Just that it's a similar, it's just a, a similar um, idea, concept. Like for a year and a half, he spent the time with the dolphins and reconnected yeah. after terrible trauma. Yeah. He, was, well, he wasn't speaking. He, yeah, wasn't he speaking. was beaten. He was virtually beaten almost to death um, by, by some bullies. And, um, the father took him to the Red Sea and and he gradually became mute. He was mute from from it all. And uh, and gradually he started talking to the dolphins. So it's beautiful. Mm. But you know, mm. in therapy, you know, when you've got someone who's mute and they begin to speak to you, it is a beautiful experience anyway. 
so you don't have to go to the Red Sea. You can have ISTDP mm -hmm. and you can get it done as well. But, <laughs> but so I, I, I was just making a point that by what the other people that were in there and and went home and had amazing results and had changes, you were literally. Um, not just telling us their story, but you're literally um, changing their lives. And I just think this is this is the future, docu-therapy. Mm -hmm. This is something that you could be doing as if you you know you need something to do. But docu-therapy. <laughs> docu Thanks, Toma. And then, yeah. <laughs> and, no, you know, Rose and I find that even on the show, people, it's, it's healing to come and talk about your story. And you just, not only did you talk about your story, other people talked about their story. You filmed them talking about their story. This is therapy for me when I talk about me on this show. So it's all, it's all what we're talking about is this community, this expression, and then you're filming it and helping others. This is a movement. This is a revolution. <laughs> and I'm just, you know, sharing ex enormous enthusiasm okay. for this process. Mm -hmm. Rose? Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to know what the ladies want to say to everyone, because I think both of you have got a message for others. And if you can actually draw that through the movie right now, I know you haven't been given this question in advance, but just draw through the movie what the movie did for you as you watched it again, as you put it together. Would, am I, you know, have I put it in the right sort of way? It's just that once you make these things, You've then got satisfaction. You've just got a joy, an inner joy. Could you talk about that and how you shared that inner joy um, with others? I would like to go first because Chrisanna, I think, can end us with that because <laughs> her experience with this is very beautiful and, and truly unique. Um, as I've watched the movie, every time I cry, Every time that I see certain scenes of myself or other people that I care about watching them go through their transformations, something is just broken open in me every single time. And the first few times it was like an out of body experience watching it. I'm like, that's, that's actually me. <laughs> that's my story. It was like, I couldn't, I just looked at it like it was somebody else and I was so moved by their story. And then just having that realization, like that was you girl. Like you did this, you survived that. Yeah. That was my journey. This is my journey. There's no end yeah. destination. And that was my awakening through this process was I'm not healed. It's a healing journey that doesn't end. It's like things will happen it's and a pil I, it just continues. A and I, mm -hmm. Yes. And my mom is actually in the hospital right now. And I had to go to the hospital in the emergency room. She had a fall. She's okay. So I'm really grateful, but she's still there. And I've been in the hospital and I actually was like torn apart. It was so tra traumatizing and, and triggering. And so I recognized that I still had pieces of me that needed to heal mm -hmm. from being in the hospital and ICU. And, and here's the thing. Now I have the tools. So I went through this experience. I went through the journey. We created this beautiful, what my beautiful friend Danny calls masterpiece of a film to showcase what is possible. So for me, if I can walk away with this, knowing that what I experienced is helping anybody on the planet, then I feel like there was such a purpose to everything that I experienced. And I just want people to have hope that their life can get better, that they don't have to stay in that darkness, that they can make a life for themselves that they really do love, even if they have these struggles. And things will start to fall away as they start to live the life that they really want to live. And I'm just <laughs> excited for that. I really want that to happen. And so I have a lot of um, hope and so much love for what is possible and so much pride in Chrisanna and what she was able to create and what we did together. And I'm just thrilled. So I would love for her to share her version of what transpired through this making of the film. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you for that. That was beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's interesting because I think I will reach the point of feeling a lot of joy, but I made, I was making edits yesterday and I made edits the day before. So I'm still like 
I, I have a bit of perfectionism in me, and so I'm still feeling like there's things I can tweak and make it even better and make it even stronger. Um, and with that said, at the same time, I think I went, I had to sort through like 150 hours of content and that felt overwhelming. And I had so many, I can't even tell you countless days on my office floor crying, feeling like this is my mission, but it's too big. And I could spend mm -hmm. six months and I don't know if I would get this done, you know, and I only had like two dedicated months that I was trying to really, really get the rough cut together. And so I just prayed for help every day, but I can tell you something started to shift in my brain. So what, you, what everyone else is witnessing is the, the you know, moments that felt most important to me, or I would say I was guided to select. And at the same time, I heard everything. So you know, even 20 participants, do you see a minute of content? There was 20 hours of calls there, and some of them were longer than an hour, people sharing their darkest parts of their story, sharing the things they wanted to work through. And that all my brain like sorted through it. And then the experts, many of them, we talked to them for an hour and a half and I'm using, you know, just little comments here and there. So that actually changed my brain. The best way I can say is I felt like I was in brain surgery and I felt myself like evolving and growing and learning. And then I felt like what an honor that I have uh, the opportunity to be immersed in this content, almost like I'm in university of mind body training or something, I don't know, but uh, something really shifted for me. But at the same time, while that was so incredible, there are times that I think, did I select the right clips? What if I could have, should I go back and look at that content again? Like, so um, there's a bit of monkey brain in there that I still work through and I have to at some point, and my work right now is surrendering and surrendering that the, the film is no longer mine. Is it, it is its own like living and breathing entity and it is going to help and, uh, you know, work in people's hearts in the way that it will. But of course I did, you know, 99% of it, but I have to believe I was just a conduit of a message. And I think that message is just something that everybody needs to hear right now. And that is that we are our own best healer. We are the answer. And when we go inside, it's not pretty, it's messy. And it's something that we spend our whole lives avoiding. We numb and we cope and we watch Netflix and we go on social media and we do drugs and alcohol. But at some point our body is going to scream at us to come back home. And I feel like that has been my, my entire work and our entire work this last year is a process of coming back home. And when you think you've gone back home, then you get distracted and you got to come back. It's just, that's why it's a practice. Every day it's a choice. And I don't always show up great to that choice. In this film, I've like, there, was been, had, there have been seasons that I really lost my daily practice and I lost the things that I, I know that I need to be okay. Uh, in trying to make something that's really beautiful and then I'm guided back home <laughs> and I'm brought back to myself. So yeah, I mean, I just think if anything, there's one part of the film where one of the masters says, you know, it's not healed, like Dana said, it's healing, loving, living. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like my mantra. We're in process and we have to have a lot of compassion for ourselves in process. We have to be okay with not being okay and just like love each other. But how does that start? with loving ourselves. And I will, last, last thing I will say, I had this awakening a few months ago when I was in editing, where I looked at Dana and said, I'm, I'm creating a film that's called Love Heals and I don't love myself. And I didn't even know. I didn't know how many parts of me were like fed up with me. And I had yeah. to do some deep intense work to become that clear conduit as I'm listening to these messages <laughs> of healing and things started to shift. I didn't force it, but eventually I was like, oh, that's interesting. Now what I've been capturing, I'm feeling within like, oh, I think I like myself. That's, huh, this is what it feels like to go inside and be okay. And so, I mean, I could go on and on, but it's like, we are the answer. We are, and I think all of life is guiding us back to ourselves. Okay, I have one last thing to say. Chrisanna, that, that evolution through creating this film, I got to witness and it is nothing short of miraculous to see her mm -hmm. shift as a human being and process yeah. things different and have more joy and more peace and less anger. I mean, it's just remarkable. And she can quote experts now with things like she teaches me all the time because she immersed herself in the content. And now I call her Buddha Chris. So Chris <laughs> Anna is my Buddha Chris because she has all these enlightened, beautiful things to tell me all the time. And it's amazing. So I just live in gratitude every day for our journey. And I'm so grateful to the two of you for hosting us and letting us share our story. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Been a pleasure. Been yeah, a pleasure. Well, I'm, I'm going yeah. to 
I'm going to end a little bit with just um, it's 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 a it's it's like a revolution. It really is a movement that must be heard, and must be seen, and I'm so in all of the the people in it and what you've done and the talent behind it and the, the best is yet to come as they say and um there's a lot of wonderful people um met talking here they're just leaving comments that you can go to the feed afterwards and see their their comments um michelle say co seo and there's some people from our world patty Ra ralph and laura anyway many people are commenting um rose and i have sent out the movie to many Facebook pages. So we're really hoping like everyone, and it's, it's, I'm going to be, I'm going to be sending it out all week. I just mm -hmm. want you to add, add please, before we, we, we say goodbye, um, say again about the movie, the showing also the YouTube thing. Will you mention that to anyone that's still listening, please. And it'll also be on recording. You mentioned that what's going to happen yeah. in the next couple of days. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, main thing is we'd love for you to watch the film and just hope that you are inspired and motivated and uh, just in whatever way you need to feel hope that you get that in, in watching the film. So Love Heals Film, L-O-V-E-H-E-A-L-S-F-I-L-M.com, Love Heals Film. And there's like a, a section where I think the, a button Mm -hmm. Or you can, I don't know. We have a new website coming, so, so I'm confused. I'm, with I'm the one that does all this stuff, so I'll speak to it. So yes, the website, and then also we have a Facebook page for Love Hills Film, but also a Facebook community, and it is growing so beautifully with people who are, they're on this mission with us. They're on this path. They are connecting, and it's really beautiful. And then our Instagram page, Love Hills Film. So in all of those bios, we have the link to see the film, and I'll be sharing it a bunch in the next 24 hours. But yeah, if you just go on the website, you'll find the place to get the tickets. It's right on that front page. And then um, tomorrow night, well, it's night for us. I know we're, we have a around the world group here. Audience, so yeah. 8 p.m. tomorrow, on the Eastern. 18th. Tomorrow's the eight, right. Tomorrow's the 18th for us. So on the 18th of January at 8 p.m. Eastern, which is 6 p.m. Mountain in Arizona, and it's 5 p.m. in California, Pacific time, we're having a party. It's a premiere party with our friends at Brain Education TV. They have a really, really wonderful YouTube channel with so many mind-body resources on it. They have like 165,000 followers. So they're hosting us on their YouTube channel. We're going to do a 12-minute cut of the film for people to see. Um, Ilchi Lee is actually going to make an appearance. He's going to have a message for the audience as well as do a short Q&A with us and him as well. Uh, so it's going to be a really fantastic event. So if people are wanting to join us. And want to see a sneak peek of the film, it's kind yeah. of like an extended trailer. It was actually quite challenging to figure out what to how do I cut you know, a long version of a trailer, a short version of the film. So it's 12 yeah. minutes. <laughs> but we're, we're coming. Ahead, what, time, what time is it at Eastern time? And on Eastern US time? Oh, uh, time the, the, the party is 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. Oh, okay, that's 5 p.m. in Melbourne, 5 a.m. in Melbourne. And uh, and so what? And at 8 p.m. in Tel Aviv. And that will be 6 p.m. in the UK. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yes. Yeah. A quick question also, so after this week where the tickets are on sale and people can watch it all week, then they can still get the movie in the same loveheels.com, they can still rent the movie. So not yet. Oh. We're just doing virtual screenings for now. Uh, so we're, we're basically following a format that documentary filmmakers follow in releasing their film. And so right now we're doing just the 18th through the 30th as our first worldwide premiere. We're doing some private showings okay. with partnering with other organizations. And then I'm sure we'll do another one, mm -hmm. not that long after, mm -hmm. another worldwide premiere. Mm -hmm. um, but then eventually we'll transition as we have more and more people, because people really, they when they feel urgency, they'll watch it. So think about when something's on Netflix and you're like, oh yeah, I'll watch that next weekend. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. But if there's urgency and there's a deadline, then people mm -hmm. we know will sit down and watch it. So we're trying to get it in front of as many people as possible. So we have these limited windows so that uh, people feel like excitement mm -hmm. and okay, I know I have to watch it between this time. 
Yeah, so if they watch it the 18th through the 30th, they're good. And then what I will be responsible for is updating like our newsletter. So on our website, if you just put your name and email address, you can stay in touch with us. And I will always share it on Facebook and Instagram to make sure people know when our next showing is if they don't see it in January. Fantastic. Thank you both. Thank you so yes. much for coming on. And uh, and all the very, 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 very best from both of yeah. us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate both. Appreciate you both. And thank you for such great questions. What a great conversation. Bye.